Praise be Jesus Christ, Ave Maria, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today I'm going to take a look at a short posted by Protestant apologist and Baptist minister Gavin Ortland. And I'm going to attempt to point out what I think are some glaring holes in Mr. Ortland's ecclesiology. So hopefully this works and hopefully you can hear everything. Because I'm not denying the spirits that work in the Catholic Church or the Orthodox Church. That's again why Protestantism has consistently with it. Firstly, I'll point out I think this is an issue. I know uh, Mr. Ortland denies this and he has ways to smooth this over. But as a former Protestant, um, I, I think it's I think it's a problem referring to Protestantism umbrella style. He does so in a way that gives the illusion that it's much more uh, united and uniform than it is. And that's just not the case. Uh, there are many church dividing, community dividing issues in Protestantism as a whole. You have divisions between Lutherans and Reformed Christians, between certain Baptists and free will Baptists, which I'm a former free will Baptist, et cetera, et cetera. It's not so simple. Some Protestants believe in a version of the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Some Protestants believe in, in pure symbolism, et cetera, et cetera. So just to refer to it as Protestantism and, and as though it's speaking as one voice, I think that's an issue in itself. History. This is the reformers, you know, Luther, Calvin, all of them were happy to say there are true Christians, true churches over there. They said the Catholic Church is not the one true church, but the Okay, I'm going to get to the issue of uh, true churches. So Mr. Ortland has this uh, ecclesiology which envisions one church, one body of Christ, but within it uh, a myriad of other churches, so different churches. I think that's an issue in and of itself. I'll get to that in a second. There are many true churches within it. Oh, the thing I wanted to point out, too, as well, is that's, I, I know he would probably try to, you know, skirt around it somehow, but that's a blatant violation of the Nicene Creed, which says that there's one holy Catholic and apostolic church. It uses the singular there. I'll get back to that in a second. That's Calvin. Luther said, much good has come to us from the papacy. They weren't denying the spirit of God at work in the ecclesial ways over there. But there was a renewal effort within the one true church. That's how I see myself today as a Baptist. Okay. A couple more things about that. Let me get my little list. I did an impromptu kind of thing. It's not exact, but I, I went through a concordance and I looked at all the times that the uh, that the New Testament uses the word church, ecclesia. And I divided it between singular and plural because Mr. Ortland and other Protestant apologists have this idea of church as singular and plural. And that is defended by scripture, but not, I would argue, in the sense that he uses it. So I didn't go too deep. I saw differing numbers 77 times that Ecclesia is used or directly other ones. But it suffices to say that uh, church used in the singular form is used roughly twice as much in a plural form. Now, when it's used in the plural form, it's speaking about, for instance, the church at Jerusalem, the church at Corinth, the church in someone's house, and then you have the churches in the book of Revelation. So in that sense, Paul goes and founds different churches and writes to this church, uh, Ephesus, Corinth, etc. And so there is a plurality within the church. But the problem here is that Although there is a number of small C churches and one large church, there's nothing in Scripture that, that gives us any kind of evidence that within the unity of the body of Christ that you have such differentiation of doctrine where you have churches, ecclesial communities in the body of Christ declaring others to be heretics. There's such a spectrum of belief in Christianity since the introduction of Protestantism that certain forms of Protestantism uh, are basically different religions than uh, Catholicism, 
Eastern Orthodoxy, Oriental Orthodoxy, the different rituals, different liturgy, or often no liturgy at all. Um, so I think that's a real problem. And I'll close with this. As an adherent of Sola Scriptura, I think he has a real problem here with his ecclesiology because he talks about Protestant tradition. He talks about the Reformers, Luther, Calvin, etc., who, by the way, basically thought each other were heretical or, or those who followed their doctrines were heretical. Scripture, including in the, in the Old Testament, where in the Septuagint, the word uh, ecclesia or kahal is for the assembly of God. You do not have multiple ecclesia, multiple kahal with different doctrines. So I think what he has introduced here is an extra biblical tradition that's not defensible, I would argue, by scripture, is not defended by scripture. And so in his, in his faulty ecclesiology, I believe he's blown a giant hole in his own understanding of sola scriptura. That's my argument. If you disagree with me or, or not, you can leave a comment in the comment section. I'm glad to engage. Praise be Jesus Christ, Ave Maria. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.